It is five years since a little girl vanished without trace on holiday in Portugal. Please do not hurt her. Please don't scare her. Why has Madeleine McCann never been found? Disgraceful. It didn't seem to me that they had had the benefit of a proper police investigation. And why, in the country she disappeared, have so many people made up their minds about what happened? I have friends that don't want to talk to me about the case. I feel alone because I don't feel support in public opinion. Why did the Prime Minister take the unprecedented step of telling British police to investigate the case? Oh God, the Prime Minister giving an order to the police to investigate something that is closed without no new evidence about it. Very strange. And with such views in Portugal, what chance have the British police got of solving the case? They talk for the first time tonight. We are seeking to bring closure to this case. What does that mean? Establishing what happened to Madeleine McCann. Solving it? Solving it, yes, of course. Tonight, as police identify new leads, Panorama exposes the tensions and the deals behind what could be the last hope of finding this lost little girl. This is Pride Luge on the Algarve. Out of season and very quiet. In May 2007, as a BBC correspondent, I was sent here to this apartment block in Luge because a little girl had disappeared. What I couldn't possibly know then was how enormous this case would become, that everybody would know about Madeleine McCann, that everybody would have a theory about what happened here and how she disappeared. And that even now, five years on, millions is still being spent trying to solve the case. After a year, the Portuguese authorities shelved the case. But now there's a new drive to solve the mystery, and it's based here in the UK. Our initial estimates in terms of the amount of material that we're facing is that it will be somewhere in the region of 40,000 pieces of information. There is ultimately a process of us turning every single piece of paper over and interpreting and analysing what is contained within them. Operation Grange, set up after a direct request from David Cameron, is a year into its work and has already cost the British taxpayer £2 million. This is the first time an officer has spoken publicly about the new search for Madeleine McCann. There is myself, a detective chief inspector. I've got three detective inspectors, five detective sergeants, 19 constables, and not detective constables, I should say, and about six or seven members of civilian staff that perform various different functions. We are here in terms of seeking to bring closure to this case. That would be the ultimate objective for us and is our ultimate objective. What does that mean? Well, closure means establishing what happened to Madeleine McCann. Solving it? Solving it, yes, of course. Their daughter's case has slipped down the news agenda, but Kate and Jerry McCann have continued to raise awareness of the issue of missing people. Last month, the couple took part in a charity fun run in London. Some people are certainly a lifeline, really, to anybody who's gone missing, but also the families that are left behind. The McCanns have never wavered from their account that Madeline was abducted and that they played no part in her disappearance. The new review is the result of their long campaign to get the British police to re-examine the original Portuguese investigation. It's taking pressure off us, I have to say, knowing that the police are actually reviewing everything. It's a huge step for us. Since the case was shelved, four separate investigations by private detectives have been funded by the Find Madeline campaign. And the McCanns have issued a series of artists' impressions of how Madeline might look in the years since she disappeared. And this is the latest picture, released today by British police. How Madeline might look aged nearly nine. In 2009, the family's campaign for a review took them to meet the then Home Secretary. 
I was enormously sympathetic to their case. All the stuff that appeared in certain tabloids, you know, suggesting they were guilt the guilty party, I think, you know, it's very difficult under that kind of saturation coverage uh, not to start believing in some of those theories. Uh, but, you know, by the time they came in to see me, I was absolutely clear that, you know, they were the victims in all of this. What do you think of the way the Portuguese have treated the McCanns? Well, uh, it seems to me, not from any uh, close working with the Portuguese police, but it seems to be disgraceful. It didn't seem to me that they had had the benefit of a proper police investigation into the disappearance of Madeleine. The review team finally set up last May and made up of experienced murder squad detectives has been sifting through the evidence ever since. It's not simply office-based. They've travelled to Portugal four times and have visited Spain twice. But what can they do that hasn't already been done? We are drawing together information from three separate sources. The legal enforcement um, bodies within Portugal, the UK law enforcement agencies, of which obviously the police are a main part, and also, and unusually, the private investigation world, which as we know is, is an element that was used by Mr and Mrs McCann to further the search for their daughter. And why? Why was this unique circumstance? Well, because at no time before have those three elements been drawn together in one place. And so what we've done over the past number of months is bring into one place, i.e. here at Belgravia, all of those, all of those pieces of the, of the jigsaw. And that's important because private detectives are banned here in Portugal. So it's the first time all of the gathered evidence is being seen together. Today, the Met team said they've so far identified 195 fresh leads in their review. But concerns remain about how much can be achieved given the initial flaws in the investigation. I'm convinced the McCann case will feature in Portuguese judicial history as a bad example what a criminal investigation should not be. So even now, what do we know for sure about the case? Madeline's parents were five days into a week-long holiday at the Ocean Club Resort. They were there with three other families. All four couples had left their children sleeping unattended, something they were later criticised for. But they made regular checks to make sure all was okay. It was at 10pm on May the 3rd when Kate McCann made the 70 metre walk to check on her children. She told police when she entered their bedroom in apartment 5A, the window and shutters were open. And Madeline had gone. One of the McCann's friends said earlier that evening she'd seen a man carrying a small child away from the block. The holiday flat still draws attention for some. For me, it feels strange to be back. I feel a real odd bond with this place. I spent so much time thinking about what might have happened here as every sort of new theory was rolled out. It feels like it's um, still full of questions. Right from the start, it's a case that's marked by mistakes. Local police initially assumed that Madeline had simply wandered off, so it was some hours before the flat was sealed off as a potential crime scene. Access wasn't restricted. The Portuguese Attorney General would later report this meant any forensic evidence at the scene was contaminated with irreversible and undetermined damage. And the man who led the investigation for the first six months, Gonzalo Amaral, now admits he got things wrong. It's a fact that our investigation had its faults and lost a lot of time, lots of time, and a lot of things didn't get followed up. And I am just as much to blame for that as anyone else. 
Five years on, it is easier to assess the early days of the investigation. Thousands of police files have been made public, and some of those who were at the centre of the police operation are now prepared to talk. So, this is where she disappeared from. This street is lined with satellite trucks, and then the police say that they have taken him for questioning a man who lives at the end of the street, just behind those bushes down there. So all the journalists shift from here to there, and Robert Murat now becomes the focus of everybody's attention. Robert Murat was in his 30s and living with his mother. Half English, half Portuguese, when Madeline went missing, he offered his skills to the Portuguese police as a translator. But 11 days in, with no quick resolution for the investigation in sight, the spotlight turned on him. Yes, they have. Now, Robert Murat believes that with the Portuguese police under pressure, he was an easy scapegoat. At one stage I was taken to an area where they wanted to fingerprint me and take photographs and all that kind of stuff and uh, I think they were trying to disorient uh, me because they moved me around from room to room, hallway to hallway, corridor to corridor, chore it seemed a very choreographed calling out, well take photographs of him and you know, he's, uh, uh, we want to send it to Interpol and it, it, was, it was a kind of a choreographed um, situation. What, to intimidate you? Yeah, and I think so. I think, and it did intimidate me at the time. It's now that I realise what was going on. I had five people rushing into a room and, um, and standing behind me and it was felt very, very life on Mars. Um, it felt very, uh, you know, um, very, just very pressured. He was questioned for 19 hours before he was released. The next day, he returned to collect his belongings, and Robert Murat says he met Gonzalo Amaral, the lead detective. He basically told me it was a game of two halves, and as the night before I hadn't confessed, um, then he would get me on the second half. And he just, he was kind of turned his back, and he didn't, he, he just didn't, it seemed they didn't care about the truth. That was the, that's how I felt. One of Portugal's leading lawyers now believes the close attention of the world's media affected the initial investigation. The police feel like they have to quickly find the culprits, because if they don't, they will be in the dark themselves. And as such, what happened in this case is that the police's main concern was to find the suspect. It was British police sniffer dogs that changed the way Portuguese detectives were thinking. The dogs indicated possible traces of DNA in the McCann family's flat and in the family's hire car. Although this was found to be inconclusive by forensic scientists, the Portuguese police made Kate and Jerry McCann our guidos, or suspects, in their daughter's disappearance. How do you feel, Jerry? How do you feel, Jerry? We know the Portuguese police believed they had the answer to what happened that night in apartment 5A. Because we can now read an internal interim report from the week the McCanns were declared suspects. It said the minor Madeline died in apartment 5A. A simulation of an abduction took place. Kate and Jerry McCann are involved in the concealment of the corpse of their daughter. And five years on, that view seems to be as strongly held as ever by some in the police. I think something happened accidentally in the flat that night. In general, I think most Portuguese investigators think the same.